there are timestamps down in the description box below in case you want to skip to certain parts that would fascinate you the most. And if you're new here, please click the subscribe button because it does encourage me to go ahead and create more videos that you would like to see. Now, with that being said, since No Way Home is out in theaters, it's gotten a certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It's gotten at least 270 something reviews on there. Most of it is positive, but there are at least 16 reviews on there that are rotten. And we're going to go ahead and look at all 16 of those rotten reviews right now. So Spider-Man No Way Home is already at 94% on the tomato meter and for the audience score it's at a 99%. It's already got 273 reviews and 10,000 plus verified ratings and for the critics consensus it says a bigger bolder Spider-Man sequel No Way Home expands the franchise's scope and stakes without losing sight of its humor and heart. And for the amount of reviews over here, you can see there's 257 fresh, but 16 rotten. So we're going to go ahead and click on the rotten reviews. It's all dumb gimmicks, sci-fi, gobbledygook, and digital spectacle. And the central love story is such an afterthought that the young couple, Tom Holland and Zendaya, barely spend any time together. While the previous Holland films have been mediocre in the modest ways, No Way Home feels downright aggressive in its mediocrity. Yet again, Spider-Man's wants and needs are deferred for villains that were created by someone else. It is as if he's a medium that's shown up at the wrong seance left to exercise ghost of someone else's past. The best parts of this bloated and uneven two and a half hour movie are the connections to past Spidey versions. Considering that just in the last 19 years, we've had eight live action Spider-Man features, there's a lot of material to draw from. If you're not necessarily a huge fan of this couple and you think that they're just wasted and are thrown in here just for the sake of having a couple in here, then yeah, I can understand your point. But to be honest, there's not really much of a problem with Tom Holland and Zendaya's connection in this film. It's just that they're this odd couple and that's what they do and some people like it. Now with the villains, I don't agree with one of these critics' criticisms on saying that it was like the other previous two movies where they had Mysterio or the Vulture being Tony Stark's fault and it's not actually Spider-Man's fault, therefore it's not necessarily a villain that's going after Spider-Man. These are villains that have an attachment towards a Peter Parker, it's just that this version of Peter Parker they have to deal with as well, but they transformed in a different way where it is a part of his problem now and it is a part of his concern. And one of the main villains that was from a different universe is now something that would be detrimental to Peter Parker's character and it is his central enemy. It is because this character is that awful and it just so happens to create tension with Tom Holland's character. Short on story, long on insider humor, this Spidey entry makes a sudden drop off in quality. I, you know what? It kind of makes sense. It's not really doing a lot on story. It's more so on creating random of sequences because it doesn't necessarily have a way of knowing what's going on within the film. It's just that the plot that's going on in here is just a sequence of events that are happening in here and just so happens that Peter Parker has to deal with it. But in the long run, because this movie is so character driven and it is about like seeing all these other people from the past other Spider-Man films that are from different universes coming together into this one, that's a part of the fun and that's something that people would want to see and it's hitting its target audiences very well. But before the surprising, rousing third act, No Way Home is some seriously rough sledding reflecting what a non-starter Tom Holland's MCU incarnation of Peter Parker has turned out to be. Spider-Man No Way Home feels like the worst kind of comic book storytelling. It only exists to heap fan service upon the viewer and create a new foundation to build upon. It's called Spider-Man No Way Home, but a better title for this exhausting sequel would be Spider-Man for Super Fans Only. A long way of saying not very much. So one of the biggest complaints that I am seeing with this movie so far is that it's only being dragged in here for nostalgia preferences or it's only doing it to please fandoms. And it's trying to get away with that without really trying to create a thought-provoking story arc that's going on in the film. But here's something that I would like to challenge with that one. If there is a movie that is only there just to have nostalgic references in here and is not necessarily caring to making a great story, then yeah, that would most likely be a problem with the film. But this movie is drawing in nostalgic preferences, but it's adding in layers towards character arcs and it's creating a story inside of this film without us really knowing it. All of the characters that are from the past films are here for a specific reason and they're creating closures 
from the other movies that didn't necessarily have a complete ending. There's closure for the characters that were from the past put into this one, and it also fits within the character arc that's going on with Tom Holland's Spider-Man in this universe. No Way Home is an intriguing case study of corporate collaboration, a self-aware meme machine, and a lackluster movie. The hype may prove infectious on occasion, but No Way Home has reduced the franchise to a rabbit hole of insufferable geek culture. I don't really understand the criticisms for the last one. I mean, I mean, the intention of Marvel movies is to go ahead and please people that are a fan of like the original source material while also doing its own thing and also bringing in things from the past but making it intertwine into this one that actually works within its connection. So yes, there's fan service in here, but I don't really understand why that would have to be a problem. Less resembles the franchise bending ensemble romp promised by its trailers than an all-star Zoom call with a visual effects budget. Though delightful in places, the third entry in Sony's third Spider-Man cycle feels both overstocked and underwhelming. There's no attempt to hide that the film is pure fan service, the greatest hits and mashups of Spider-Man's cinematic legacy. The latest labored movie in Tom Holland's up to this point winning iteration of the web slinger is all about webbing characters through multiverse magic from previous iterations of the franchise to deliver fleeting dopamine hits. No Way Home should have focused on making new viewers fall in love with the characters so they want to discover their previous movies. Some poignant moments show what could have been. I think the last comment there does have a point to make about if nobody really does know the Sam Raimi or the Mark Webb Spider-Man movies, then they would be curious to see what those characters are actually like, but instead you would have to see those movies in order to see this one, and that is an occurring problem if you're wanting to see this movie as its own standing point, but because this is the MCU and you have to watch previous movies in order to get this one, then you're not necessarily going to be that fascinated with the film, but if people did watch that, it works because they did see those movies. Now, with the other ones talking about how this movie was pretty underwhelming in the third act, or that the whole visual effects that were promised in the trailer were pretty much just like low budget and really dumb, I don't really understand the criticisms for that, and I think some of them are pretty too cruel for what they're talking about. And for the rest of it, it's just, again, the fan service comment that we've already talked about before. And yeah, that's it for these reviews. Some of them I kind of get, some of them I really don't. They're pretty mean, but that's kind of the virtue of what Rotten Tomatoes is like whenever you see their reviews. But what did you think of Spider-Man No Way Home? If you did see it, did you agree with some of the criticisms that they have in here, or did you disagree with them and you really liked what you saw within the film? Or if you did not actually care for the movie, but have something opposite that these people actually had to say about it, what did you actually think about the movie? Put your thoughts down in the comment section below and let's have a conversation about it. And like this video if you agree with what I say, or dislike this video if you disagree with what I say. I don't mind the dislikes. So that is it I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be sure to see you in the next video.